Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one, I'll show you how to make this very popular English tea time treat. And it's these wonderful fruit scones. They're quick, easy and delicious. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Okay, I'll begin the recipe by sifting the flour, salt, baking powder and sugar into a bowl. Now I'm using self-raising flour, which already contains some baking powder, but if you're using plain or all-purpose flour, you need to add an extra two teaspoons of baking powder to the recipe. Add the sugar to the flour. Now I'm using caster sugar, but you can use granulated if that's all you have. Now add your baking powder and salt. I'll give that a quick mix with my finger. Now sift the whole lot into a fairly large bowl. Those lumps are baking powder. Just push them through with your fingers. Next add your cold butter and start rubbing it into the flour with your fingers. Now keep rubbing out the lumps of butter until they're all gone. When you're done, the consistency should be like fine breadcrumbs. It takes a little while depending on how cold your butter is. Mine was pretty cold and in real time this took me around 4 minutes to complete. To test that it's done, squeeze a little in your hand and it should break up again quite easily. Once you have no butter lumps left at all, add the other ingredients, starting with the sultanas or raisins. Now I'm using these beautiful seedless raisins. Next to go in is this mixed candied peel. Most supermarkets will sell this. If for some reason you can't get hold of any, just double up on your sultanas or raisins. Now give that a good mix with your fingers, making sure the fruit is not all stuck together. Time to add the wet ingredients. So add your vanilla extract to your milk and whisk it together. Now I make my own vanilla extract and I do have a video on how to make it. It's very easy. I leave a link in the description box below the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of your screen. Now add the liquid to the bowl and start cutting it all together. And over the years I've found the best tool for this is just an ordinary dinner knife. Just keep going with your knife until it starts clumping together. Now this type of dough has to be handled as little and as gently as possible. The more you mess about with this dough, the tougher the finished scone will be. Now once it's reasonably mixed, turn it out onto your worktop and very gently with light hands knead it all together. If your measurements were right at the beginning, it should come together quite easily. Keep gently folding until you have a soft light dough and form it into a rectangle as shown. Before going any further, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius, that's 355 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 4. Okay, sprinkle a little flour on your bench and on the dough. Mm -hmm. 
Once your bench and your dough is dusted, start to roll out the dough until your rectangle is approximately 13 millimeters, that's half an inch thick. Now the thicker you finish rolling your dough to, the taller the finished scones will be. Downside, you won't get as many scones. This thickness of half an inch should yield around 15 scones using my 6 cm cutter. Ok, start to cut your scones. Once cut, place them on a large parchment lined baking tray, evenly spread apart. Once you've cut as many as you can up the first piece, gently gather and fold the dough together again and start to cut the rest. Space them out as evenly as you can on the tray. Now these scones rise up more than they rise out when baking, so you can have them quite close together. Once all your scones are cut and on the tray, get them into the preheated oven and set your timer for 15 minutes. And at this point I hope you don't mind if I give my three recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in them. All three books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand, the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you to the website shop where all of these items are available now. Once your time is up, get them out and transfer them to a wire rack and allow them to cool for at least 15 minutes. And these are looking fantastic, they've risen quite a bit too and they smell absolutely gorgeous. Asbestos fingers, don't try this at home folks. Right, I'll come back in a short while and give these beauties a try. Looking marvellous. Okay, these are still a little warm, which in my opinion is the best way to try them. I'll cut one in half and try it with some of my homemade butter and blackcurrant jam. And if you want to have a go at making your own butter, check out my video, it is so easy to make. Right, time to give it a taste. And they are absolutely delicious, soft, light and moist, not like those dry horrible store bought ones that has a texture of sawdust. Hope you give them a go, and why not take it a step further and make some jam and cream scones. Check out my earlier video on how to make those. And of course, these definitely get a big thumbs up guys. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Maria Martin, William Rowe, Alexis Montgomery, Liam Smythe, Emery Cohut, Steve Hershey, Tango Delta Delta, Curtis Hosing, Eric Adrick, Lena Weaver, Elizabeth Power, Georgina McDowell, Robert, Diane Langtree. And there's also one who wishes to remain anonymous. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen and bye for now.